Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to speak about a topic that is of interest to me. I've been doing research as I uh, continue to publish my videos and I've come about with very interesting information that I've just found out. It has been published through a study in Kenya that people actually retire with only 30% of the money that they've been earning from uh, their, their employment getting into retirement, meaning that you retire earning say a thousand dollars every month into getting to a stage where you are only earning three hundred dollars or thirty thousand shillings from a hundred thousand which you are used to every single month from employment to thirty thousand. So the people retire with thirty percent of the repre replacement in terms of income. So people are not invested enough. This is below the global average of 60% replacement of salary when you are entering into retirement. So why are Kenyans not investing? Why are Kenyans not saving enough to be able to go into retirement? So these are some of the things that I've come across in. Of course, the first one is distrust in institutions. A lot of Kenyans have a lot of distrust in financial institutions, in institutions that are, act as investment vehicles where people could be able to invest and be able to see their value grow. In fact, 60% uh, of Kenyans are, uh, do, do not or have not invested uh, through the stock market, have not invested through government bonds and bills and bonds, and I wonder why this is the case. Of course, the major reason is distrust in financial institutions. We have had cases uh, in the past where institutions have fallen, where banks have fallen, going with savings of Kenyans, and Kenyans are unable to be able to recover their money. And because of this, distrust has come up from uh, this happenings where banks close down, where financial institutions close down, where investment vehicles close down, and the regulatory body cannot be able to help Kenyans recover their assets or helps Kenyans recover very little assets in the way of recovery of assets after these closures. So because of this, distrust has been a big problem. And any financial institution, any uh, investment vehicle has to work extra hard to be able to convince Kenyans to be able to acquire trust in this financial institution. Of course, the other thing is insufficient income. Insufficient in income is one thing that makes people not invest as much as they should. Maybe it's because several people do not get the jobs until much later in life. So somebody clears their education by 25 but cannot be able to acquire a job up to until 35 so in the 10 years they are not earning money and by the time they get there they are simply fighting time to be able to acquire something and by that time they also want to start a family and so many other things that make them not be able to build enough income by the time they are retiring they have not even gotten to the epic uh, top of how much they should be earning in the in their career life so they have to get go into retirement at 60 only having earned their income for 25 years so again the length of time people are earning their money and the amount of money they are actually earning because remember when there is a lot of uh, supply and very little demand then the prices in the market go down. So it's the same with the labor market. When there's a lot of people who want to be employed, but very few employers who are actually employing at that time, then people who are employed are given much lower salaries, below per salaries. And so they may not be able to get or garner enough to be able to meet their needs and be able to be able to invest effectively. So of course, low income, no jobs, and these other things make these people not invest. Of course, there are those people who have entered into farming, farming that produces at least 40% direct or indirect employment to Kenyans, and farming has not been working out as well. In fact, Kenyans are not making enough from farming because the high cost of inputs, the unreliable rainfall, the high cost of uh, uh, transportation, poor roads, and all these things, which makes uh, uh, earning from farming actually harder. So income is one major thing that is keeping 
people away from investing. Of course, the other thing is, uh, of course, the fear of losing money that is related to uh, distrust in, in, in institutions, the fear of losing, losing money when you invest in your own business because you do not want to lose money. So people have held money so closely because money has been hard to find. People have not been earning enough and so they hold money so close to them and the fear of uh, losing this money because remember investing takes risk you have to risk to be able to invest and so people do not want to risk the fear of risk people are so risk averse that they want to hold money close to them now the problem with holding money close to them they find that they spend this money unwisely as opposed to investing it to be able to build value and savings and investment to go towards their future. So that is again another scenario that we are looking at. Of course the other thing is not enough information. Kenyans do not have enough information to be able to help them to gather their thoughts, to be able to help them to know where to invest, to be able to help them to know the various return on investment, to be able to know their rights as regards to this investment, to be able to help them make this good decision. And again, that is why I started this channel because the people in my homeland need to know, need to understand, need to grow their financial capacity so that they can be able to invest because without knowledge, you will only perish. So that is why I started this channel to be able to help people to be able to invest as they go about. Uh, their business. So of course the other thing is the thought or the mindset that only the wealthy can actually save and invest. There is a wide held mindset or thought that only the people who earn a lot of money can invest or save and the rest only survive. So you find that people have, uh, ha, have gotten to that mindset of relaxing when they think about investing because they're saying, I will wait until I earn enough. But remember, money is enough. I've never found somebody who said, I earn enough. I don't want any, any more money. I've never met somebody who says they don't want to earn any more money and they've had enough because money is never enough. And you have to work extra hard. You have to work every day to be able to earn this money. But remember, you need to make this money also work hard to for you by investing this money to create more value for your money more interest for your money more money over your money but you need to also open your mind to be able to learn to be able to understand and to be able to get this knowledge and this information that it is not the wealthy who invest alone. Even you can be able to invest with as little as you can. And that is why shares even in the stock market go at various prices. Meaning that you could be able to buy shares at a very low amount or at a very high amount. Various investments and investment vehicles allow you to be able to uh, invest in the very divisible small amounts that you can be able to do period of time. So not investing because you think well, only the wealthy invest is a poor mindset. So my question to you now is, so if Kenyans are not investing, where, what are they doing towards their retirement? So what are they doing to be able to get their money as they go into retirement and as they look at where the wealth that they need? Of course, many enter into retirement without enough money and so have to depend again on the goodwill of their children. They have to depend on the goodwill of their children because they have not invested enough to be able to get into retirement. Of course, others also have to rely on the goodwill of the government to be able to give them some money through the state pensions that have been decreasing in number. In fact, I know of somebody who retired and was given a lump sum of Kenya shillings, 450,000 shillings or $4,500 only a paltry amount as a lump sum when they entered into retirement. So even these pensions are not enough. But many people unknowingly depend on this. So your children, uh, others depend on uh, um, the government pensions that are not usually enough. Others again depend on uh, some investments or businesses they can be able to do as they enter into retirement. However, statistics that have 
come, are coming up are showing that when somebody enters into business at an old age and out of desperation because they have entered into retirement, the, the chances of failure of this business is extremely high. So before you get to that level where you are desperately trying to invest to be able to create value in your old age, remember you can be able to avert the situation by investing and investing for your, your future and for the growth of your investments as you enter into retirement. I hope that I am shedding light every day. I hope that you are learning, you are growing and you are growing. Remember to subscribe to the channel, to like this video and to share this information widely. Thank you and enjoy your day.